the centrifuge building on wires and that didn't work. You could drive it across uh, a trainer we had, you could drive it across the earth, 1G, that wasn't the same. And you really never got a chance to feel what it was like to drive it till you got to the moon. But I gotta tell you, that's one of the most brilliant pieces of engineering this country or the world has ever come up with. It was absolutely spectacular. The way it unfolded, and I could go on for hours about that thing, but it was a, as a lot of you already know, it was an electrically powered car. Each wheel had its independent drive, and we had front and rear steering on it. So it could drive around rocks and boulders and craters. And the lunar surface is absolutely irregular. There's nothing level about it. There are small rocks, big rocks, small craters, big craters, shadowed craters, no craters. It's really tough to drive it. On the other hand, it's very responsive and it's just a superb piece of machinery. We went all of about 12 miles an hour, but that's really fast on the moon. And the real challenge was poor old Jim sitting in the right seat. You know, when you're driving a car, it's okay. You can drive the car. The person in the car, not knowing where you're going, has a tough time. And old Jim was hanging on for dear life. <laughs> but he said, hey, this is like a bucking bronco. He said, yeah, it sure was. But anyway, it was a, a, a brilliant piece of machinery. It got us around. We went about 26 kilometers, uh, three different sites, and it provided the transport not only for uh, Jim and I, but for extra geology tools and the rocks and that sort of thing. So it was a, a fabulous machine. And I wish Dick had had a chance to drive it on 18. It was his turn, it was his time to go. And if somebody in this country will get around to it, we'll go 18, right, Jake? Yeah, I could have been the 13th man to walk on the moon. That's right. <laughs>